Women in the United States are more likely to die from childbirth than women in other high-income countries. Black women die at a rate three to four times that of white women. Not only are patients at risk, but maternal death also puts physicians at risk for medical malpractice lawsuits, even when patients are informed of the risk. So hospital care for obstetric patients should focus on preventing these maternal deaths. The CDC has identified the three most common potentially preventable causes of death as postpartum hemorrhage, venous thromboembolism, and severe hypertension. Research from the doctor's company of maternal injury claims may shed some light on the causes of these injuries. The data shows that technical performance is the main factor that led to injury from hemorrhage. Technical performance includes complications that were known to patients as a risk and the failure to recognize and respond to hemorrhage. Selection and management of therapy, both during labor and delivery and surgical procedures, was also a factor that led to injury from hemorrhage. In addition, women who are at risk for VTE should have precautions taken to prevent blood clots. All hospitals, regardless of size, need to have a plan to respond to severe hypertension in a pregnant or postpartum patient within 60 minutes. Hospitals that provide obstetrical services should take the following four steps. First, they should focus on implementing the recommendations from the Alliance for Innovation on Maternal Health. Second, all hospitals should implement multidisciplinary staff meetings or huddles to assess and review each obstetrical patient's risk factors. Third, Staff should perform drills and simulate obstetric emergencies that can occur in any labor and delivery unit. And finally, hospitals should use the Maternal Health Compact. This ensures readiness by formalizing existing relationships between lower resource hospitals and tertiary care hospitals when patients need consultation or a transfer to a higher level of care. The American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists and the American Academy of Family Physicians should collaborate on the content for an additional year of comprehensive training for family medicine physicians who are considering practicing obstetrics in rural areas. Also, care providers need to make sure that patients have adequate follow-up after discharge, especially in the case of postpartum hypertension. These patients need to be seen back in the office within one week. And finally, obstetricians can increase their awareness of the risks of adverse events by reviewing data from closed maternal malpractice claims.